Hi, welcome to The Coaching Game. I'm Laurie Lawson, and tonight my guest is Alison Carmen. Hi, Alison. Oh, hi, Laurie. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. I found out about Alison through this fantastic book that she wrote called The Gift of Maybe, and she's going to tell us uh, why maybe is a gift, because um, I think she's going to turn the definition of maybe upside down on its head, which I love a lot, and that's the whole point of this show. So let me tell you a little bit about The Coaching Game. The Coaching Game is based on points of view, The Coaching Game. And that's a series of 65 cards with exquisite photography and captions underneath that may or may not match the photography. But the whole concept is to bring right and left brain thinking together. Uh, and it just, the results are kind of amazing. You, you're down the, the trodden path and then all of a sudden you're over here and it's like, whoa. And that's what I love about Allison's book because um, I'm not sure. I think when we're uncertain and when we don't know what to do next, we don't really see that as a gift. So we're going to find out why she says it's a <laughs> gift and how, how she got a whole book out of it. So, Allison, um, tell us, tell us a little bit about your background. Okay. Well, I was a stressed out lawyer in Manhattan for, for many years. And I did not expect this path, this path that <laughs> was unexpected, I guess the gift of maybe. <laughs> yes. Um, but through my work and through being a lawyer, I always recognized that I was addicted to certainty. If I didn't know what was going to happen next, I projected things were going to be bad or things weren't mm -hmm. going to work out. And I think a lot of us in society have this problem. We're always so worried when things don't go exactly as we planned, we jump to the conclusion, life's not working out, I'm doomed, how will things get better? And so what we do is we write stories to make ourselves feel better. I'm going to have this amount of money in the bank when I'm 50. I'm going to have this job till I retire. My child will go to this college and then my child will be okay. And we use these stories and they make us feel so much better. But then the unexpected happens. We lose our job. We don't have that money. Our child doesn't get into that college. And we start to spin. And even though intellectually we know life has so many possibilities, emotionally we fail to grasp this. So in my life, in order to manage my addiction to certainty, I wrote this story as a young girl. Mm -hmm. I was going to grow up. I was going to get a job. I was going to be a, a lawyer at a very big firm. I was going to make a lot of money, marry this great guy. The balloons were going to come down, and everything was going to be great. And it's I remember story. it was a great story. <laughs> and I actually achieved a lot of those things in my life. And one day, I remember I was walking to work my first day feeling so good. And the second day of work, my office mate comes in and says, hey, Allison, did you hear they're firing half the first years? And I was a first year. So all of a sudden, I based so much of my life on that story, mm -hmm. my head started to spin. How am I going to pay my rent? What are my parents going to think? What's going to happen next? And I stopped sleeping, and my immune system became compromised. And I started to go to all these doctors thinking maybe wow. somebody would help me. And they took all this blood work, and they found nothing wrong with me, but they gave me this little blue pill. And I said, take this blue pill, and everything will be OK. <laughs> but even that didn't help. Really? And my anxiety just got worse and worse and worse until well, let me one ask you, day. The blue pill was an anti-anti-anxiety anti anti medication. Viagra, but no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that might have helped me a little. Maybe bit. who knows? <laughs> but we, uh, we say no, blue pill it was for, Viagra. Yeah, it was definitely <laughs> okay. for anxiety. Okay. And and then one day, through the midst of all this anxiety, I heard this beautiful story. And the story's in the book, so I know that you've heard it before. Right. And it's about this farmer. And this farmer has a horse, and it runs away. And his neighbor comes by and says, "You have the worst luck." And the farmer says, "Maybe." And the next day, the horse comes back with five mares. And the neighbors comes by and says to the farmer, you have the best luck. And the farmer says, maybe. And the next day, the <laughs> farmer's son is on the horse. He falls off and breaks his leg. And the neighbor comes by and says, you have the worst luck. And the farmer says, maybe. And the next day, the army comes to take his son to war, but they can't take him because his leg is broken. And the neighbor comes by and says, you have the best luck. And the farmer says, maybe. And when I heard that story, I actually felt a pop in my chest. Wow. It was the first time in my life. I realize that if something happens I don't like, things can change. Maybe things will get better. Maybe this is good. Maybe I could still be okay. And I started to play with this idea. And the more I played with it, the more peace I felt. And the more peace I felt, the more open I felt, the more hopeful I felt. And so my addiction to certainty kind of shifted into this openness to this place where the unknown actually had became my friend. Because that's where my life would change. If I wasn't happy today, maybe things would change tomorrow. And so it just shifted everything for me. And it, my life became more about possibility instead of fear. Wow. OK, so that's, that's a lot to grasp. <laughs> it's a cool <laughs> story. I like that. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. Um, I don't even know where to start. That, that's so fascinating. So what, you, what you're saying is that when you say you're open, it's like you're open to, well, I think you're open to the fact that things will change. 
I, 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 there's, there's a saying, the only constant thing is change. Right. So, but that doesn't have to, we all, I think one of the biggest fears is change, and just because we don't know what's gonna happen. So I think we all fear change, but you're saying instead of fearing it, you're kind of, are you welcoming it, or are you coping with it? What, what's a good word it, for well, that? Well, it's really interesting that you ask that because people have two problems. One is, my life is really great right now, and I'm so worried that things will get bad, mm. or things are really bad right now, and, I, and I'm so worried it'll never get better. Right. So we're, we're always playing with these two ideas, and how do we manage that? So mm. for me, the maybe always makes me recognize that wherever I am in this moment, I can be very present because I know life in that change, even though I know life's gonna change, whatever is in my mind at that moment, mm. I know that change always has hope and possibilities. What people do is that they look at their life, either I'm gonna get this job or I'm gonna lose this job. Right. And it's very stressful to think those are the only two things that could possibly happen to you in your life. But you forget mm -hmm. that life has maybe. Yeah. It's not just A or B. There's so much more that could happen. Yes, you could lose that job, but maybe there's another job. You could keep that job and it could end up not working out and there could be another job out there or you'll have this job to retire. Life keeps changing, but there's always hope. So that's why this idea of maybe always reminds us we're not doomed, we're not stuck. Life has maybe. Maybe my thought's not true. Maybe everything's okay. Maybe things will get better. And it sounds so simple, but that one little word takes you from this cramped, stuck place in your mind mm -hmm. and opens you to all that's possible in life. Don't you have um, a personal uh, experience like with Columbia College and something like that? NYU Law School. NYU, yeah. yeah NYU. Maybe, it, maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Th that, that would make it a little clearer. Would you mind sharing that? Yeah, it's, sure. It's a great what, story. what happened is that because I was so addicted to certainty, my view was this needs to happen for my life to be okay. And I think, like I said in the beginning, a lot of us do that. So mm -hmm. my goal was I was gonna go to NYU Law School. Mm -hmm. and, and when I got to that place, that meant everything was gonna be okay. So I bank, what we do is we bank so much on the story that we tell about our lives, about what needs to happen. And I actually had never even been to NYU. I, didn't, I never <laughs> visited the school, but it was like this story that just made me feel happy and great that that's what will make my life wonderful. And I'll have no more problems, I'll have no more worries, I'll be set. And I remember the day I got the letter from him while you actually was in the city. Mm -hmm. And I called my dad and he was on Long Island and I, and I said, you know, what happened? He's like, you got waitlisted. And if you saw me that day, I was yelling and screaming through the, to the streets of New York City. And for the first time, I, I was at NYU. I ended up at NYU on the steps crying my eyes out like, like my life was over. And I really thought that. And weeks had passed by. And that's what happens, too. We bank so much on it, and then we're still breathing. Yeah. And then, like, oh, well, life's still life happening. Life didn't end, so but now right. I have, what do But I this do one now? thing yeah. that I thought was going to happen didn't happen. So waitlisted means that you may get in, but yeah, you I may, may not. Yeah, I may get in. And all of a sudden, the weeks are passing by, and the ability to, you know, accept other schools are passing by. And all of a sudden, someone came up to me two months later and said, well, what are you doing when you graduate? <laughs> and I don't know. It's just when I woke up, and I was like, what am I doing? Well, my plan, I'm well, my, yeah, my <laughs> I'm plan waiting. didn't work out. And so I'm it's waiting. what happens. Our plan doesn't work out. We sulk. And it's like, oh, things can never be different. I was sitting around waiting, 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 and everything was passing me by. And I actually hopped on a train, and I, I went into the city, and I had to beg. I had gotten into Fordham Law School. I had to beg them to accept me because it, the, it, the time had passed to accept. The and they, thank goodness yeah. they let me in. And ironically, I ended up going to NYU. I got my Master's of Law there. So it's, it's interesting, in life we don't know, we think life's not going our way. I met my husband because I went to Fordham Law School, we ended up living in the same building. Um, all these great, some of my best friends are from that school, all these wonderful things happened to me. So I was busy pouting, life's not working out, mm -hmm. yet maybe it was always at play. Maybe I was supposed to go to that school. Maybe I was supposed to go to NYU, but I got my master's there. So many beautiful things happened, and if I had just opened up, life would have been so different, but instead I suffered. To me, that's what maybe does, I, I can't stand the suffering. It's mm. even like forget the goals, forget the opportunity. We suffer so much when we forget life has maybe because we're so busy telling the story life's not working out. We forget we're not experiencing the moment and we're not opening ourselves to, up to all that's possible. So that maybe really helps you with that piece, that, that part that we suffer with. It's a great story. I love it. It's in the book, right? Yes, it's in yeah. the book. <laughs> no, speak, because I think that's how I found out. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, so uh, I, you're not, I know you can't be telling people don't have a plan. It's like, no, I'm, I love plants. <laughs> plants are good. No, yeah. plants are great. You know what it is? We don't suffer because we made a plan. We suffer because we're not flexible. Mm. So I can have a client come into my office and he, he has a plan. Allison, this month I'm going to make $30,000 and win 10 clients. At the end of the month, 
if he only has he only makes ten thousand dollars and has two clients he could tell the story things aren't working out well but maybe they are you know, mm -hmm. you made that, that plan, you made that goal, but maybe you need to do something different. Or maybe you're exactly where you need to be, and maybe you'll have more clients next month. It's the story we tell that, that messes us up. But if we're willing to be flex flexible and fluid through change, we could hold on to the goals and just get there another way. And sometimes we find the goal that we set is not really what we want. And, and that's okay, too. Right. So I'm very into goals. I'm just into maybe because people need to be flexible because everybody's, the minute something doesn't work out, we all just shut down. And when you shut down, you're not open to all everything that could possibly happen in your life. So it's about staying open, setting goals, staying open, being flexible. And with maybe you could hold the hope that life will work yeah. out the way that you want it to. Well, I know that, that it's, it's not uncommon for people to live someone else's story. It's like your parents tell you, right. oh, you have to go to college, you have right. to graduate, you have to be married by right. age 20 or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, but you, I hear you saying that we're creating stories for ourselves right. that are, I don't want to say unreasonable, but non-flexible, I guess is a good word. That right. are just, you know, they, they're not. So how on earth do you untrain people to do that? Because it's like, I, I have to constantly talk to myself because I'm not sure I have hard and fast goals right now. It's like yeah. I'm just really having a good time doing what I'm doing, but it's like, shouldn't I be over here? Yeah. And shouldn't I be over here? And it's like, yeah, just But relax. maybe you're exactly where you need to be. Exactly. It, it depends on the type of person you are. There are people that I work with that do very well with the flow. They're, they're very open. They're okay where life goes. Mm. And, and they're enjoying it, and they're having this great experience. There are other people that need to set goals. They wake up in the morning, they need to know what they're going to do. They need to know what their plan is for life. Both are okay. It's just if you're able to stay, and maybe you're going to be able to enjoy it and be flexible and fluid with the changes when they come up. Yeah. And that's really where it ends up being. I mean, and also, I think a lot of people try to be positive every day. I mean, we wake up every morning, we're like, today, I'm going to be so positive, everything's going to work out. <laughs> I'm going to land this client, and my child's going to do well on her test. And if you're afraid of uncertainty, it's really going to be hard to, to stay positive because the minute you don't land that client or the minute your child gets a C, you're going to start again writing that story, life's not working out, you're going to start shutting mm. down. And then you're going to be battling every day between positive and negative thinking with maybe you can't stay positive because you recognize, okay, I didn't get that client, but maybe I'll get another client or maybe something else will happen. Right. So maybe it's really there's, you can hold on to your positive thoughts, you can hold on to your goals, or you could just hang out and, and love where life is taking you. But I, maybe we'll always constantly help you let go of those fear-based thoughts because deep down we're, we're scared that we're not okay. But maybe we are, and maybe yeah. everything's exactly as it needs to be, and maybe things will change tomorrow. So it maybe constantly gives us the hope and reminds us there's more possibilities out there. Now, what's the difference between maybe and faith? Faith. Well, that's a really great question because mm -hmm. people who have faith don't need maybe. Like if somebody <laughs> was very, they read the book and say, well, why do I need this book? Really? Because they just, they have this relationship with life, relationship mm -hmm. with the universe, that everything's going to work out. And, and I don't have to worry because if this doesn't happen, something else will. Right. Sometimes it's God-based. Um, even like Norman Vincent Peale's book, The Power of Positive Thinking, his, base, his book was God-based. He said everything will work out. You know, God will take care of everything. Right. But what happens if you don't have that belief? What happens if uncertainty scares you? How do you get there? And maybe I think is a bridge between belief and faith. Belief is. Oh, I love that. Right. Maybe is a bridge. bridge right. Oh, I because love belief, belief is ah. this, this, again, the story. This needs to happen mm -hmm. for me to be okay. Faith is whatever happens, I'll be okay. But maybe bridge is that because when something happens we don't like, when we recognize maybe everything is still okay, then all of a sudden we cross the bridge and we're in this area of faith. It's a, it might be a cognitive faith, but you're hanging out in the unknown. You're saying, you know, everything is okay. I can enjoy this moment because I recognize life changes. And over time, I have clients that have gone past maybe, and they actually have cultivated faith through this practice of maybe. Wow. Right? Really? Because you're hanging out in this. You really are hanging out in uncertainty. And people who hang out in uncertainty often have faith. So if maybe allows you to hang out in this new place where the unknown's not scaring you because you recognize that's where all the goodies are, you're going to cultivate more faith over time. I feel I have more faith than I ever have. I use maybe every day. Every single day. <laughs> Beware of the woman who wrote the book. Every <laughs> single day I use maybe. But there are certain things that don't bother me anymore because yeah. I see that life has an ebb and flow and I could be with it more and stay with more hope and possibility. Hmm. Yeah, I, I have a, I have a 
tendency to think, okay, whatever is now is permanent. And I yeah. know better than that. My life yeah. has been nothing but chaos and change, you know, <laughs> since age 10, I think. And, and manifesting. Like, I know that. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, and, and so it's like, and it's just a hard lesson. You just have to keep reminding yourself right. that, you know, this this is now, but there right. is, <laughs> there, you, you've survived the past, so you can probably get to the future. Um, right. I love the idea of maybe being a bridge, though. Yeah. You say that you work with um, companies. Do, do you, I can't imagine a company buying into me. Uh, I work with entrepreneurs. Oh, okay. So, and okay. they own companies. It's yeah. a very entrepreneurial type because a lot of business owners, it's, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty when you own your own business. I work with a lot of parents, a lot of artists, places where, I mean, when you have a small business, you know, you wake up, you have no idea what's going to happen. You know, you have every client is very meaningful, right. every marketing decision you make, every financial decision you make, and you're always out there hanging a little bit in the wind. But with maybe, you kind of feel like it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's all right. I know it's going to change, even when my sales are down. And after the 08 crash, that's when maybe really took off, because before then, maybe it was my own self-practice. I had left the law, I was doing business consulting. I was not planning on sharing this with anybody. This was for me. I was less stressed, I was less worried. No matter what happened, I recognized life had maybe. I was more present, I was more open. And one day I was on the phone with a client after the 08 crash, and he has this beautiful story. He had this beautiful story in Manhattan. And I went to visit him. He hadn't paid his rent in three months. Sales were horrible, he had no money. He was getting kicked out of his apartment. And no matter how many times we went over his finances, his marketing, it didn't matter. The uncertainty of the situation was so overwhelming that mm -hmm. I shared with him the farmer story. And all of a sudden, I saw he had like this shift. And I looked at him and said, you know, life has maybe. And he went home that night and we, we, you know, we had all these discussions and that was the piece he came back with the next day. And I realized I need to share this with people because people don't realize that now life has hardships. Sometimes things don't work out the way that we plan. We might get sick, something happens with our child, we could lose our job, and we think it, it could never be better. But when you know life has maybe, you could sit in the moment, whatever is happening, get the most out of maybe says, what's still possible in this moment? It mm -hmm. allows us to know there's hope, to know there's change, to know there's possibility, to be present and just be open to what life has to offer. It's one little word, but I promise you, it really <laughs> shifts everything. It really does. Yeah, well, I, I, you've given such great examples of how it can do that on a personal level and on, you know, on a, a level for your client. And that's interesting because if you're an entrepreneur, at some point you have to be uh, a neophyte entrepreneur. You, you haven't done it before, but you know, I'm going to do yeah. this. And so you really are in the land of maybe. It's like maybe this will work and right. I'm hoping. And here's the formula for success. Um, when, how, do, how do people know when it's time to pack it in and by that I mean it's like okay maybe this is going to get better right. maybe um, yeah. I'm going to win the lotto yeah. maybe yeah. well <laughs> where, yeah. where you know, do it's we, interesting we you said the reality you're interesting you says lotto because and I was going to tell you a little side story there's this fellow that I gave my book to and he mm -hmm. works in a garage near my building in Manhattan <laughs> and he came up to me and said Allison I didn't have a penny in my pocket and so I thought maybe I'd win the lottery so this is like my worst nightmare, right? Because right. I'm helping people set goals, moving forward to life. And I have this fellow who seemed to embrace maybe. And he said, Allison, I won. I won $50. I felt a pit in my stomach because I'm saying to myself, oh, my goodness, this book is making this man a gambler. So, and then, you know, time passed by. And a couple of weeks later, he came up to me again. He said, love that maybe. Play it again. Oh won $200. Goodness. I almost couldn't sleep that night because all of a sudden I'm like, okay, this you guy destroyed is, a man. He's, he's going to the store and then playing and saying, you know, maybe I'm going to win. And, and then all of a sudden, you know, I'll see him homeless and on the street. And so the third time I saw him, I couldn't help myself. And I turned around and I said, his name is Lionel. I said, Lionel, I said, you know, can we talk about this? And he laughed. He said, I knew that was going to bother you. He said, really? He said, I really don't play lotto that much. He said, what maybe he's done for me, it makes me see when... When I get a flat tire, when my car is not working, but I have a bad day at work, I don't get so stuck in that moment. Mm. I realize that it'll pass. And just because this is happening, I don't have to take it so seriously. It'll always change my life. It has maybe. I have hope and possibility, no matter what's happened to me before. And oh, my heart. <laughs> so now, like, we have this joke. Oh. We have this joke. But no, he played lotto twice. So um, no, that's not really. <laughs> just, I always love that story. But that's really the purpose. What happens is that, you know, we have wisdom. 
but fear clouds the wisdom. Yeah, that was one of the cards that you chose is right. fear. And it's like, and actually this whole concept was fear driven. Fear which driven. Is amazing because you, again, you're, you're turning the definition of fear. Fear is like, you know, you want to avoid it, but maybe not. Yeah, I yeah. mean, maybe not because it, it, it look what it created. Things. Well, yeah. fear is the thing that keeps us in a business that's not working. Fear is a thing mm -hmm. that makes us give up too soon. Fear disconnects us to our intuition, our wisdom, everything wow. we know to be true. So all maybe does is it allows us to let go of the fear. I've mm. never found, you know when it's time to close the doors. I have, it's the fear that doesn't let you close the doors because if I close the doors to my business, I'm doomed. I will never have another business. I will never be able to do anything again. But when you leave, you remove that fear, you know it's time. Maybe you know it's, it's time, time to close these doors be and open no new right, ones. Right, because if you're yeah. so afraid, you're just going to keep it open day mm -hmm. after day after day because you're so scared that when that door closes, you won't know what's gonna, what you're going to do mm -hmm. next. But with this idea of maybe you could look at your business. I mean, I've, we've, I've had that with clients. We're able to look and say, listen, this is not working out. And, you, know, you know when you're unhappy. You know when you're stressed. But the fear gets you trapped in there and say, this is the only way I can live. Yeah. So maybe just allows you to live life without fear. So if you're not afraid and you see your business not working out, you're going to be able to close the doors and open up something new. Mm. And, it, and sometimes it's the fear that's keeping your sales down. But the fear is what causes all the confusion. So maybe just untangles that fear and lets you know if you always believe life has hope and possibility, you're going to be less afraid. And when you're less afraid, you're going to make better decisions in your life. Funny, the, the one thing that keeps popping in my mind, and, and I know it's a far more complex issue than, you know, are my sales up? is um, being in an abusive relationship. And mm -hmm. it's like, and being afraid to leave because right. of, for whatever reason. Um, yeah, and I could just see where, if, if you could just open that up a little right. bit and say, okay, you know what? Um, right. I, I don't know, I'd probably go with it. How much worse could it be? You know, right. it's like, this is not, this is not working. Yeah. But that's hard. It's hard when you're in the middle well, of it. When you're in the middle of it, because fear, because it's in a way, you're so, you were so used to the fear. Fear is, fear is the, I once wrote a story called The Comfort of Chaos, and it's like, okay, the, I know, I know what to do with fear, I know what to, you know what to do right? with fear. Right, it's the most yeah. comfortable shoe to put on sure. and walk outside <laughs> and just live with it. And what's interesting is, too, is you think that you're making your life safe by making all these decisions based mm -hmm. on fear. But I've had, you know, it's interesting that I have clients who have had jobs at the biggest firms in Manhattan for 20 years thinking they're safe, and I've had entrepreneurs who have taken extreme risks, and these people sometimes you lose your job. Mm -hmm. And then they don't, they're, they're bewildered. And I have these other clients that have been living outside in uncertainty, taking mm -hmm. crazy risks. And they're multimillionaires today. We don't know. We mm -hmm. never know. And so, but when we let go of the fear, we'll always keep regenerating ourselves. It's funny because uh, you mentioned 2008, and that's when I changed the people that I was working with because it was, I have an HR background. And everybody was like in fear of losing their job or lost their job or whatever. And it was like, I, okay, I have to help. But what I found was there was a prevalent um, undercurrent. It's like, well, you know what? I played by the rules. They didn't work out. Right. So now let me do what I want to do. Right. And it was really uh, an awakening. And it was right. like, okay, the rules are gone. Right. And I, I can't plan for this. So let me at least have a little bit of fun and enjoyment with what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. and, and so everybody goes, oh, my God, 2008, the worst time in the world. And I go, it was. But then on a personal level, maybe it wasn't. Maybe right. a lot of people came into the land of maybe. Well, that's where yeah. my practice really kicked into yeah, gear because people didn't too. know what to do, right? We had the <laughs> yeah, same exactly. type of experience yeah. because to recreate ourselves, like after a while, like do you want your life to be interesting? Do you want to keep expanding as a human being? With maybe I find that's what happens to all of us. We're, we keep leaning into the unknown because we want to just have new experiences. But when we're in fear, we're just going to keep doing the same thing over and over again. And eventually, as 2008 showed us, eventually, the old stops working, and then we're yeah. really stuck. And then we keep banging our head against, it's like banging your head against the wall. I mean, eventually it hurts, but we keep doing it because <laughs> we don't know what else to do. Exactly. So with maybe it kind of just opens up this, it's almost like a little tiny opening for you to view like, maybe I could do something different. Yeah. Maybe there's something out there, else out there for me. Step up out of the yeah. box. It's like yeah. a little light, just a little light. And it, you don't, it's not demanding it. It's not saying you have to be different. Things have to change. It's just an opening of possibility where we build more courage. And as I said, we cultivate more faith about 
changing our lives and being more fearless. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah. So what would you tell people? The other card you chose was stuck, which is a yeah. rusty old nail. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she was, I chose the two worst cards in the deck. <laughs> so not really. We've, yeah. we've turned them around yeah. and made them really positive. Yeah. Uh, what would you tell people? What can they do to get unstuck? What's a tiny little okay. first step that well, they could do? Well, there's a great exercise that I have mm. in the book. And what I ask people to do is I ask them to write their biggest fear down. What's your biggest fear? Okay. And often, we think our biggest fear is what's actually happening in our life. Like we talked about, I lost my job. Uh, my husband left me. But really, th I find the biggest fear is that we're, we think we're not okay. We're, we're not safe. Mm. So you might get there, you might just say, my biggest fear is I'm not going to be able to make any money. I'm not going to be able to support my family. And then you ask yourself, am I absolutely certain that's true? Most of the time, our biggest fear, if we ask, are you certain, we'll say, well, I'm not actually certain that's true. I, I guess something else could happen. Then you start writing maybe statements down. Mm. You start them very broad. Maybe this is good. I lost my job. Maybe things could get better. Maybe I'll be okay no matter what. And then you can make them more specific. Maybe I need to call Joan and ask her if there's an opening at her firm. Maybe I need to take a class. I guarantee anybody who's watching the show, if you do this for 20 minutes, you're going to feel a little better. For me, I always get this little pop. But mm -hmm. you're going to realize that there's more out there. And even if you're still afraid, that fear is going to be surrounded with all these other possibilities. So you're mm -hmm. going to feel lighter. You're going to feel open. Say, okay, this thing's happening to me. I'm very uncomfortable, but it doesn't mean that I'm doomed. It doesn't mean game over. There's other things out there for me to experience in life. And that exercise helps me every single time I do wow. it because we always forget. We're so, we have this habit of thinking the worst, habit of thinking things can't be different. But the minute you enter that little idea of maybe you bring it into your mind, it was okay. Maybe there's something out there, even if I can't see it in the moment. I love it. Yeah. It's kind of like you've made fear one of the um, possibilities of many, you know? Right. And, and so you've diminished its, its power over right. you. Right. Well, because like you could that. throw it in a little test tube or you could throw it in the ocean, yeah. right? And then you yeah. see so much more as possible. And as mm. we talked before, you have so many gorgeous, beautiful cards in that, in that game, mm -hmm. yet I couldn't get to any of them because my life was filled with so much fear. I, I couldn't be grateful for the moment because I was always thinking about what was wrong. And mm. I couldn't feel my success. I couldn't feel my joy because I just wanted to know what was going to happen next. I thought that was the ticket to my happiness. And when you realize that we're never going to know exactly what's going to happen to us, and that's really not the ticket. The ticket is the moment, the, yeah. the presence. And you can't just go up to someone and say, be in the moment. Stop. Really? It's hard for people <laughs> because they're worried that they're not okay. But with maybe, you can kind of ease into the moment and realize life has a bi bigger perspective. And even though I'm not exactly happy with everything that's going on in my life, uh, maybe I can enjoy my lunch. And maybe I could realize that something could change tomorrow. And maybe I could have a nice phone call with someone. It kind of breaks life down. Yeah. And we get to enjoy the moment, realizing there's still hope and possibility for the future. All right, we got like 40 seconds left. Okay. Do you believe that? Uh, tell people where can they get, well, okay. tell them what they're going to find on your website, okay. which is at the bottom of the page okay. there. Um, AllisonCarmen.com. I have a blog. I write a lot about maybe and spirituality and parenting and, and business. I also write for Psychology Today and HuffPost, and you could find my book, The Gift yeah. of Maybe, at all major <laughs> bookstores and online. And, and it, will it be on your website also? Yes, you can uh, find a, a, a the gift to my website. Maybe um, give yourself this gift. Uh, it, it really is um, revolutionary and inspiring. Mm -hmm. So, Allison, I can only thank you so much for being on the coaching game. What a fascinating concept, and thank you for the gift of Maybe. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me.